Consider a case scenario where a patient walks into your clinic complaining of food lodgement in his upper left back tooth region and pain in his gums. He also complains of bleeding gums during brushing. As we have discussed in our previous videos, there are several indices which can be used in this case, but today we will learn how to apply the periodontal screening and recording index to this case. This is an important index from a clinical examination point of view, both for public health dentistry as well as your periodontics clinical examination, which is known as periodontal screening and recording index or PSR. The PSR index was given by the American Academy of Periodontology of the American Dental Association. To perform this index, we need a mouth mirror and a WHO probe. The WHO probe is not like any normal probe. Before we understand the PSR index in depth, let's first know a little bit about the WHO probe. The WHO probe is a specially designed probe developed by the WHO in the year 1978. It mainly has two components, the working and the sensing component. The sensing component of the probe is a 0.5 mm ball at the tip and is called so because it helps in sensing a catch, presence of plaque in calculus and presence of any defective margins, etc. The markings on the probe on the other hand act as the working component. They are called so because it is this component that helps us in the identification of the presence of a pocket and its extent. The markings are 3.5, 5.5, 8.5 and 11.5. Also, remember that the probe has a black band which extends from the markings of 3.5 to 5.5. In this index, we divide the patient's dentition into six parts known as sextants. The six sextants are divided into three maxillary and three mandibular sextants. The maxillary sextants comprise of the maxillary right including the teeth from 1.8 through 1.4. The maxillary anterior, as the name suggests, includes the anteriors 1.3 to 2.3. And lastly, the maxillary left, including the teeth from 2.4 to 2.8. The three mandibular sextants similarly include the mandibular left sextant, which covers the teeth from 3.8 to 3.4. The mandibular anteriors, which are 3.3 to 4.3. And lastly, the mandibular right sextant, which includes the teeth from 4-4 through 4-8. Each tooth is probed with the clinician walking the probe around the entire tooth, thus examining the mesiofacial, midfacial, distofacial and corresponding lingual or palatal area. To understand how the scoring needs to be done, let's see the scoring criteria for the PSR index. Let's understand this by learning about the highest score and then moving towards the lowest. A score of code 4 is given when the black band of the WHO probe completely disappears, indicating the presence of a pocket with a depth of more than 5.5 mm. In such cases, a comprehensive full mouth examination along with charting and treatment is needed. A score of code 3 is given when the black band of the probe is partially submerged. A comprehensive examination is needed in such cases. In cases where the black band is completely visible but there's presence of bleeding on probing along with calculus or defective margins, a score of code 2 is given. The treatment plan here would include supragingival and subgingival cleaning first. This should then be followed by the correction of any defective margins of restoration if present as they could otherwise lead to plaque retention. Lastly, Oral hygiene instructions are to be given to the patient to avoid the progression to a diseased condition. A score of code 1 is given when the whole of the black band is visible accompanied by bleeding on probing. The treatment here would include a thorough supragingival and subgingival scaling along with instructing the patient about the various methods of maintaining a good oral hygiene. Lastly, a score of code 0 is given when the black band is completely visible but there is neither any bleeding on probing nor the presence of calculus or defective margins. This is indicative of the patient maintaining good oral hygiene and hence they require reinforcement of oral hygiene instructions to continue to do so. Now, in cases where there is vocation involvement, tooth mobility, mucogingival problems or even gingival recession extending to the colored band of the probe which is equal to or more than 3.5 mm, in any particular sextant, a code asterisk is given along with the score for the specific sextant. 
Now, there are certain points that we must remember while performing the periodontal screening and recording index. After the clinical examination, the code for each sextant will be the code of that particular tooth with the highest code in a particular sextant. Also, as discussed previously, the code asterisk, if applicable to any sextant in a patient, is given along with the code for that particular sextant. Now, coming back to our case scenario, upon examination of the patient by walking the probe, it was noted that bleeding on probing is present on 16, 15, 23, 26, 32, 31, 41, and 42. Calculus was noted to be present concerning all lower anteriors. Additionally, a sulcus depth of more than 5.5 mm was noted on the distal aspect of 26 with grade 1 incipient furcation involvement. The remaining teeth were found to be in sound condition. By keeping the scoring criteria that we discussed earlier, the highest code for the first and second sextants with only bleeding on probing is code 1. The third sextant along with bleeding on probing has a pocket on 26 of depth more than 5.5 mm, thus being code 4. Since it's noted that there is grade 1 furcation involvement also on the same tooth, an asterisk is noted next to the code for this sextant. Lastly, in the fifth sextant, along with bleeding on probing, there is presence of calculus in the lower anteriors, leading to code 2 for this sextant. This data is then entered into the recording format as you can see. The treatment for this patient is then done according to the code given for each sextant as discussed earlier. In conclusion, periodontal screening and recording play a crucial role in public health dentistry. By detecting and monitoring periodontal disease, we can promote early intervention and provide effective treatment to prevent tooth loss and preserve oral health. Remember, regular screenings, accurate recordings and adopting healthy habits are essential for a confident smile and a healthy life. For more such videos, Download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.